I was uh, living my dream, something I had, had put me to bed at night, woke me up in the morning. And, but it began many, many years before I was born. This is my mom. Um, it's funny because I had no clue who my mother, like, I, she was my mom, I mean, but she was, um, I had no idea of any of the things that she did. My mother was one of the very first native rights activists in, in the 1960s. She was also, uh, she was born in 1940, so any of you lovely people here that might be of her contemporaries, you know, native or not, what was expected of women back then? You were expected to be married and settled down and having children by the time you were 18. Even in school, schools used to gear women into the home economics, right? You got to make sure you can cook and clean and sew. You don't want to learn sciences. You don't want to learn math. Heaven forbid you might want to go and be a doctor. So my mother, even in high school, had to take the home ec path, and then she took night classes and she took all her sciences because she wanted to go to law school. She wanted to do all that. But I remember I asked my mom, I said, Mom, I said, when was the first time that you became politicized? And she said, she was 13 years old. And as I told you, she was raised by her grandparents. And my great-grandparents were farmers. Our people were farmers, corn, beans, and squash. That's what we did. And our, our territory of Gunnawaga is right along the, the uh, St. Lawrence, right across from Montreal. And in the 1950s, the early 50s, our well, the Minister of Indian Affairs signed an agreement to have a seaway dug along the St. Lawrence. And a seaway is, is like a, you know, it's a, ca a canal so that all the big tankers could get into the Great Lakes and get into the interior of Canada. Well, that seaway was going to come right through my community, right through the front gates, right through, right through my grandfather's farm. And my great-grandfather, in our culture, he was a war chief. And in our culture, the war chief is kind of like, he's like your chief of police, guidance counselor, and principal all wrapped up into one person. He's the most influential person amongst our traditional people. And my mother said she, he was so powerful. I, she used to go to ceremonies with him and, and see him, you know, speak. He was an incredible speaker. And he fought the seaway. He fought it and fought it and fought it, um, even though he didn't speak, really speak English. He would go with a translator and he would travel to try to fight that seaway because it was going to literally take away our, our waterfront. Well, she said on, in 1953 when she was 13, he wasn't able to stop it. And they dug right up to the front of his house. They forcibly removed him and they kept digging through his home. And she said at that moment as a 13-year-old girl, she said, I knew that we were not on even playing fields. I knew that as Native people, this wasn't right.